All right, tech fans, buckle up, because today we are diving deep into the iPad Mini 7. And we're not just talking specs. Yeah. We're going deeper than that. We are diving deep into Apple's strategy with this. Absolutely. Exploring how this new Mini 7 fits into their vision for the future. A future powered by AI. Which is so interesting. So what does that even mean? What does that mean for you as a user? Okay, so we've got a mountain of reviews, yeah. in-depth analyses of the new A17 Pro chip. Oh, yeah, we're going to get into that. And even some early user impressions. Let's see what people are saying. To unpack today. Yeah. Should we do a little history lesson first? Let's start with a little history lesson. Okay. The iPad mini. Yeah. This isn't brand new. This is not Apple's first rodeo with a small tablet. No, it's not. That's been around 12 years. It's had its ups and downs over the years. Some would say more downs than ups. Okay, all right. But that's what makes it interesting. Right, so why bring it back? Why bring it back, especially in a world obsessed with giant screens? Right, everyone wants a big screen. Why not let the mini fade into tech oblivion? That is the question, isn't it? It is the question. And it's one we will be circling back to throughout this entire deep dive because okay. there's a fascinating story here about changing user habits, Okay. the rise of mobile gaming, uh -huh. and Apple's gamble on a future where AI is deeply integrated into our everyday devices. And speaking of AI. Oh, here we go. Let's talk about the elephant in the room. Or should I say the A17 Pro chip in the Mini 7? This thing's a beast. This thing is packing some serious power. It really is. Right. Yeah. Okay, so for those of us who aren't fluent in tech jargon, right. break it down for us. What does it all mean? What does it actually mean? Simply put, the A17 Pro chip is designed to make your experience buttery smooth. Okay. Apps load faster. Got it. Games run smoother. Nice. Multitasking feels effortless. Effortless. But here's where it gets really interesting. The A17 Pro isn't just about raw power. It's about unlocking the potential of Apple intelligence. Okay, now we're talking Apple intelligence has been generating a lot of buzz. A lot of buzz. What is it? And okay. what does it actually do? So in essence, Apple Intelligence brings advanced AI capabilities directly to your device. Okay. So think image and text generation on the fly. Wow. A Siri that's actually helpful and proactive. I would imagine that. I know, right? Yeah. And personalized assistance with everyday tasks. So it's about making your iPad Mini 7 an intuitive partner, not just a tool. Exactly. That sounds incredibly powerful. It is. But, but some of our sources mention limitations for EU users. That's right. And it's a crucial point. Yeah. Right now, Apple Intelligence is US only. Okay. English language support only. So EU users are stuck waiting. For now. For now. Apple has said they're working on a wider release, but on the new. delay has definitely raised some eyebrows. I bet for EU customers excited about the potential of Apple Intelligence, this delay must be a tough pill to swallow. Oh, for sure. It's like buying a car with the self-driving feature that's coming soon. Exactly. And it makes the iPad Mini 7 a much tougher sell in those regions. Yeah. And it raises questions, too. Such as? About data privacy regulations and Apple's approach to developing AI for different markets. It seems like this move is generating as much speculation as excitement. Absolutely. Okay. But we can't forget about all that power. Right. The power extends beyond just AI. Okay. Even without Apple intelligence running at full steam, you're going to see a noticeable improvement in performance. So even with a staggered rollout of Apple intelligence, mm -hmm. the upgrade to the A17 Pro chip is still a win for users globally. Without a doubt. Yeah, Whether you're can't. browsing the web, editing ah. photos, or just hopping between apps, right. that extra processing power is going to make a difference. And it's all thanks to this tiny but mighty chip. Tiny but mighty, that's what they say. It's like the little engine that could. I like that. But let's move on to another upgrade that has everyone talking out. Okay. The Apple Pencil Pro. All right. This isn't your average stylus. Definitely not. Is it? The Apple Pencil Pro with haptic feedback. Okay. I have to admit, haptic feedback on a stylus sounds kind of gimmicky to me. You think so? Yeah, convince me otherwise. Okay, so <laughs> imagine the feeling of a pen gliding across paper. Oh, yeah. The subtle resistance yeah. and texture. Right. That's what haptic feedback brings to the Apple Pencil Pro. Really? Yeah, it's not just about fancy vibrations. It's about recreating a more natural and intuitive drawing experience. So it's not just for artists, then? No, not at all. Okay. Even if you're just, like, jotting down notes or marking up documents. Right. That haptic feedback adds a level of realism that's surprisingly addictive. Oh. Huh. And then there's the toolbox feature, okay. which lets you quickly access frequently used tools and shortcuts right. with a simple tap on the pencil's tip. 
It sounds like they've thought of everything. He really did with this one. But there's a catch, isn't there? There might be a catch. The iPad Mini 7 only supports the Pro version of the Apple Pencil, right? That is correct. So those with older Apple Pencils are out of luck. Yeah, it's a trade-off, unfortunately. Yeah. Apple wants to push their latest and greatest tech. Right. But that does create a compatibility issue. Of course. For users who may be already invested in the previous generation Apple Pencil. Yeah, I can see why that would be frustrating for some users. Yeah. It okay. feels like a move designed to push people toward upgrading their accessories. It's certainly a strategic decision on Apple's part. Right. By going all in on the Apple Pencil Pro, they're signaling a commitment to a more advanced and immersive user experience, but at the cost of backward compatibility. It's a classic Apple move, isn't it? All right. Push the boundaries of innovation. Classic Apple. But sometimes at the expense of convenience. Yeah, that's true. But speaking of user experience, let's talk about the actual experience of using the iPad Mini 7. Okay. Specs are one thing, yeah. but how does it actually feel in your hands? This is where those early user impressions come in handy. Yeah. And overall, the feedback is overwhelmingly positive. Really? People are raving about the Mini 7's portability, yeah, yeah. its long battery life, and how well it handles everyday tasks, even gaming. It's being touted as the ultimate go-anywhere device. It really is. Small enough to slip into a purse or a large pocket. Right. Yet powerful enough to handle whatever you throw at it. That's the idea. And even though it's not marketed as a gaming-centric device... Not necessarily. The A17 Pro chip seems to hold its own right. It does. Okay. Even with the slightly less powerful GPU, the iPad Mini 7 can handle demanding games surprisingly well. Wow. You might not get the absolute highest frame rates or graphical settings, okay. but the overall experience is smooth and enjoyable. So it's a true all-rounder. It is. But let's talk about that smaller form factor for a moment. Okay. Is it actually comfortable to use for longer periods? That's the big question, isn't it? And the answer depends on your individual needs and preferences. For someone with big hands like mine, I can imagine typing on that smaller screen would get a little cramped after a while. Yeah, if you're used to a full-size keyboard, it's an adjustment. Yeah, and if you're someone who likes to work with a lot of windows open side by side. Right, multitasking on a larger scale. You'll probably want the extra real estate of a larger iPad. For sure, or even a laptop. Yeah, exactly. It really depends on your workflow. So it's a winner for casual use browsing, reading, watching videos, even like gaming. Right. But... For those who need a workhorse tablet, it, it might not be the perfect fit. I think that's a fair assessment. It all boils down to understanding your needs and priorities. Which brings us to the bottom line. Yeah, let's talk numbers. Price and competition. All right. At $499, how does the iPad Mini 7 stack up against other small tablets on the market? Well, you're getting a lot for your money this time around, especially with that upgraded chip, the increased base storage. Yeah, that storage bump is huge. It is no more deleting files to make space for a new game. Exactly. So who is the iPad Mini 7 perfect for? I'd say there are three main groups who should take a serious look at the Mini 7. Okay, let's hear it. First, anyone who prioritizes portability uh, above all else, this is the tablet that's always by your side, ready to go wherever you go. Sounds like me. The second group, casual users who want a smooth and enjoyable experience for everyday tasks, Browsing, streaming, social media, you know, the drill. Makes sense. And finally, creative professionals who are drawn to the possibilities of the Apple Pencil Pro, that combination of portability and precision is very appealing. It's a game changer. It is. And what about those who might want to explore other options? What are the alternatives? Well, if your workflow demands a larger screen or a more robust operating system, a larger iPad or even a laptop, might be a better fit. Right, makes sense. And if budget is your top concern, there are more affordable Android tablets out there. Right. But remember, you often get what you pay for. The iPad Mini 7 offers a premium build quality, a seamless user experience, and access to Apple's ecosystem, which is a powerful draw for many. Yeah, you mentioned earlier that Apple is positioning the iPad Mini as a more AI-integrated device. We did talk about that. What does that mean for its future, especially for someone thinking about buying one today? It's a glimpse into where Apple sees the future of personal computing heading. If Apple intelligence lives up to its potential, the iCAD Mini 7 could become even more indispensable. Okay. Imagine a pocket-sized device capable of generating stunning images from your descriptions, scheduling your entire day based on your preferences, and even anticipating your needs before you do. Okay, that sounds incredible, but also a bit far-fetched. 
<laughs> is this realistic or are we getting caught up in the hype cycle? It's understandable to be skeptical. Right. We've seen plenty of so-called revolutionary tech fizzle out over the years. That's true. But there are reasons to believe this time is different. The A17 Pro chip, the Apple Pencil Pro, the increased storage. These aren't just incremental upgrades. They're strategic decisions that lay the groundwork for a future where AI is seamlessly integrated into our lives. So the iPad Mini 7 is like a sneak peek at Apple's master plan for AI domination. You could say that it's a small tablet with big ambitions. It's definitely given us a lot to think about. It has. So to wrap things up, the iPad Mini 7, is it a revolutionary leap forward? Maybe not. Maybe not. But it's a significant refinement of a beloved device packed with cutting edge tech and a tantalizing glimpse into a future where AI could change the way we work, create, and interact with the world around us. The potential is certainly there. It's up to each user to decide if the iPad Mini 7 aligns with their vision of the future. Well, there you have it, our deep dive into the iPad Mini 7. We've explored the specs, dissected the features, and debated the implications of this powerful little tablet. Now it's your turn. What are your thoughts on the iPad Mini 7? Head over to our website or social media channels and let us know. And until next time, keep exploring, keep questioning, and keep diving deep into the fascinating world of tech.